All right, let's see if we're live. All right, we should be should be good to go. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide, and welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about how to build a fluish, a, <laughs> a fluent English vocabulary without being uh, without being overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> Pardon my poor introduction to this. Let's get started. Uh, this should be an entertaining video. Uh, this is something I wanted to do because I received an, uh, an interesting question from a Fluent for Life member. Uh, and he was talking about how do we learn all the vocabulary we need without feeling overwhelmed by that. And one of the specific interesting examples he gave is talking about uh, I actually put this down in the uh, description below this video if you'd like to read that. Uh, but it was basically talking about like different expressions for the same thing. So this is something that we teach in the program and the reason we do this is because you will experience that in real life. So you will have different people saying different things even for the same uh, like the same idea or expressing the same concept or whatever. So as an example, one word was, or one phrase was to build a rapport with someone, to build a rapport. Let me erase this first. <clears throat> so we have build a rapport with someone. So when you're making a connection, you're getting to know someone well to build a rapport. Let me know if that's not very, uh, not very strong here. I think we should be working just fine though. Okay. All right, chat's working too. Nice to see you. All right, so building a rapport, or we could talk about making, or even building or developing a connection. with someone. So to, to build a rapport, develop a connection, uh, and this learner was saying, hey, uh, it's, it's challenging to try to learn all of these different ways of expressing like, the same thing. And so he also noted correctly that in his native language, usually he just has like, you know, maybe one thing that he says in a conversation and he'll just use that again and again in different conversations. And this is correct. Uh, and this is exactly what native English speakers are doing well, uh, as well. Uh, but the reason we teach this is because you don't know who you're going to meet in a conversation. So uh, the basic idea for this, and this is a kind of naturally varied review, where you're learning different ways of expressing the same thing. So you could say like, oh, it's really hot, or it's crazy hot, or it's stifling hot, or it's hot as hell in this room, okay? So there are different ways you could say that, uh, and there are also many different ways that other people will say that too. So really what we're doing when we're building a vocabulary, I'll go into this into more detail in a moment, but what you're really doing when you're building a vocabulary is you're finding words that fit well for you, but also building a large enough vocabulary that you can understand what other people are saying. So you don't have to really like have a really strong word or something like knowing all these things equally. You can pick one that you like and then use that. But you will also be prepared for what other people are saying in conversations. So I wanna talk about how this works, like the, the actual process of building a vocabulary, but making sure chat is going on okay. There we go, nice to see everybody there. Adriano, let's learn English from the best English teacher in, on YouTube. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Nice to see everybody out there. Uh, yes, if you do have questions, let me know. I will do my best to uh, work through the chat uh, after I go through this. It shouldn't be that long of a lesson, but hopefully you enjoy this, all right? So the basic problem is uh, we have different ways of expressing something, and it's hard to build a vocabulary because there's so many things to learn, all right? So let me show you how this works, uh, not only for your native language, but also for learning English. Now, if anyone uh, out there has ever played like a role-playing game or some kind of video game where you have a character, so you start out at the beginning of the game, here is your character. Uh, you are basically very weak. 
you don't know anything, uh, you don't have very good equipment, so you don't have a good weapon or shield or, you know, like your armor or anything like that. Uh, but by the end of the game, usually you have, you know, like a, like a really strong, you know, armor and you got like a big sword and a shield and, uh, you know, other like kind of powerful things like that that make you a better character, all right? Now I'm going to show you we do the exact same thing with language learning, and this will help you to kind of organize the things that you learn as you learn them, all right? <coughs> so yes, uh, most people have, uh, this is just a, a very simple curve of vocabulary that you would use in, in your day. So most of the vocabulary you have, like if we have, let's say you only know 100 words. So this is like from 1 to 100 over here. And all these markers are fading out on me. They're, they're disappearing. So the, like, the top words that you will use most frequently, things like the or uh or an or you know, whatever the, the things you use in your daily life, you're going to use those words very frequently. So this is how often you use them. And many words, you know them, but you just won't use them very frequently. All right? So it's the same thing in your native language, and it's the same thing in English. There are many, many words in the language, but most people don't use most of them. And people have a much larger vocabulary than what they use in everyday conversations. So you might know a lot of words, but you don't actually use them. All right? So what you're doing uh, when you're learning, the, the kind of core idea here is that you want to build up your, your English speaking character in the same way. So you, again, you begin with basically nothing, but as you learn more, you're getting to improve your character over time. And what's interesting, I use this as, a, as an analogy because the character, it, each one of these things is a different piece. You can think about these like different uh, grammar points or phrases or something like that. Uh, where you have each one of these things that you can you can kind of change so you can have maybe a really strong sword uh, But a really weak shield all right, or you might have like a really good You know like top piece of your armor like a chest plate But maybe the leg armor is not very good all right So your goal is to make all of these things strong But I just want to make the point that each one of these is strong individually all right so what, what we're doing when we're building a vocabulary, we're really doing uh, two things. And it's important to understand how we build a vocabulary uh, and why we want to do this the same way natives do. All right. So usually if we, if we imagine, man, these markers, oh my goodness, must be, I'm going to have to uh, describe this in a better way. So usually we begin, you can see that there. Uh, imagine you're, you're learning a brand new language for the first time and you just learn your first word in that language. Now there are two ways of doing that. The first way of learning the language is you get a translation. All right, so the teacher just says, this word means this. And they're just telling you what the, the meaning of that word is. And then that way, okay, you can kind of understand what's happening. You didn't really discover the meaning of that for yourself, so you don't really understand. But usually the, the first few words in a language are pretty easy to learn, all right? So I just tell you, you know, the names of colors or adjectives or simple nouns like, you know, marker or shirt or I, things like that. All right, so you can either learn this as a first language uh, where you're actually understanding what it means. So I can hold up something like this and give you a lesson in Japanese uh, about like what this thing is, like maka, akai maka, aoi maka, like I often do. All right, so here I'm teaching you the language in the language. All right, so there again, these when we're when we're first learning the language, we're trying to learn two different things. Uh, and you can choose which one of these you're doing, but I always recommend people learn English as a first language because you really want to understand it in English the same way natives are doing, all right? Because when you're building a language, uh, you're, you're, you're actually taking, again, these, these different pieces of vocabulary and putting them together, all right? So as you learn, uh, you're, you're, you basically have like, it's almost like different categories or different slots in the same way that you would have a character, like here's a slot for uh, your hat, or here's a slot for you know, your, like your, your helmet, or here's one for your shield, or something like that. It's the same thing with your, uh, with your vocabulary for the world around you. So you see, uh, like in Eraser, you see this object, and you have to think, what is the word I use for that? 
So if you're learning it in, in Japanese, like, you know, this would be like Ireisa, Keshigomu, you know, something like that. So if I'm trying to teach you the language, I can teach you in Japanese, or I can give you a translation through your native language and teach you this, all right? Now, what happens when you're, you're going through and, and building your vocabulary with these different slots? There are two different things that you're doing as you're building the vocabulary. So the first one is you're kind of filling in slots that you understand. So like you can see this, you can understand what it means, and you look at it and, and think, okay, there's a vocabulary word connected with this. All right. Now, this is a basic noun. It's a physical thing. And it works the same way if you have even like, you know, more complicated things. So you might have something like, I don't know, like an idea like justice or truth or something. And you're still learning that either in English or you're learning a translation from your native language. All right. Let me make sure everybody is following me so far. All right. Hopefully, I think this makes sense. I'll go back and check the chat uh, a little bit more uh, in a bit. But ah, these markers this is really uh, this is really pissing me off over here that I, I didn't. I brought these markers a while back. <laughs> it should have got more. Um, so anyway, as you go up, you you basically have this like your vocabulary is uh, it's like forking. So you learn more words, you learn new things. Okay, you get more vocabulary that's coming in, and then you basically have to choose what you're learning when you learn a new thing. All right. So let's look at an example like. Uh, the one uh, that we got from, uh, from the Fluent for Life member, which is like having rapport in a conversation. Uh, and so if you, you learn like that first word again, or that phrase, either you learn it uh, in your native language or you learn it, uh, or learn it through your native language or you learn it all in English, you can basically, you get one thing as you learn it, and then you can choose when you learn something new, do you want to replace that older thing or do you want to keep using the, the thing you just learned, all right? So as an example for me, uh, learning Japanese, when I was, well, is it maybe like a few weeks ago, I have been using like the word like percent. So it's the same thing in Japanese. You can say like non percent for like how much percent of something. Uh, and then I heard someone else say like non wari as like the same thing, like what percent? And I said, oh wow, that's a much cooler, uh, more interesting, faster, easier, and it just like had all the better, it was like better armor, like a better piece of equipment for that slot. So when describing percentages like this, like talking about like the percent of something, that was just a much better way of describing it. And so I said, oh, look at that. Like I will replace uh, the word percent with wadi. Uh, and so in that same way, you're learning, uh, as you learn new vocabulary, you don't have to have all of, like, the, all of the vocabulary you know at the same level. So you don't have to put pressure on yourself to try to remember everything equally. The point is to get better armor, better equipment as you go through learning the language. And so you might have like the kind of passive vocabulary. I mean, you can still use the words if you, if you want to, but really you still have your kind of like one word or phrase that you use most frequently. It's the same thing with grammar. So there are different ways of expressing something and then you can pick which one is most comfortable for you. And yet then your job is like to try, to try to improve that thing as you learn more, all right? So we begin with something like percent. So I, I learned like how many percent, what percent of people are doing something, all right? But then I say, then I hear from someone else like Nanwadi, and it's like, ooh, that, that's, that's a cooler, like I went from like a level, you know, one sword to a level three sword. So I said, I'm, I'm going to stop using this other one. I mean, I still remember it. You can hear me, I use both uh, and remember them, but there, there's one that I kind of equip in the same way like a character in a video game uh, that I'm trying to show like this is the one I will use most frequently. So I still have all of the older equipment here in my inventory, all right? So hopefully uh, there's some video game players out there that understand what I'm talking about. Uh, the basic idea again is that you begin with basically nothing. And you have to and you have to start collecting equipment for the for the individual like words and phrases and grammar points and things you want to express. So the real question is, will you learn those things as a native? So learning them like uh, learning English as a first language, or will you try to learn them through your native language?
And usually the, the problems that people have about like forgetting words or having trouble expressing themselves in conversations, it's because they're learning through their native language and not really making a strong connection with the, the actual English because they don't, they don't learn it through English. So they're trying to study maybe some vocabulary rules or they're looking at maybe like grammar constructions that they don't quite understand and not getting many examples of the actual grammar they want to use. And so that's what causes a lot of the trouble. So as you're learning new words and phrases, number one, you should be doing that all in English. And then number two, what you're doing is you're trying to, you're trying to learn new words and understand them and replace things that you didn't really, like you kind of learned earlier and now you say something different. You found a better, more interesting or more colorful way, whatever you find is good for your life. It's not like you have to use one word or another, it's just what you feel comfortable with. And this is why you will find lots of native speakers that speak differently. So I might say, oh, it's crazy hot over here. And someone else says, yeah, it's incredibly hot over here. We're both talking about the same thing, we're just expressing it in a different way. But one person, they, they might say it's like, oh, it's crazy hot or it's crazy cold or crazy something. That's just a word that they use frequently and it's easy for them and it keeps the conversation flowing, okay? So I don't want you to try to remember all these things equally. We don't want you to wear like all the armor and all the, all the weapons and everything all at the same time. You don't have to try to collect everything and try to recall everything and use it. Just try to relax, understand things like a native, and then that's where you're going to start uh, using things much more confidently and fluently because you're not worrying about like, oh no, I've got all these different things and I, and I don't understand exactly what they mean, all right? So again, I really want to make this point clear. If you start learning things through your native language, it becomes more difficult to do this because a big problem you will have is worrying if you're, if you're really using the right word for the situation. But if you're learning like a native, you're always connecting situations with vocabulary. You're not trying to connect a, uh, like a translation in your language with English. You're trying to connect English with the situation. And so when you hear someone else, like I just use that like from pasent to, to wadi. So if I'm using that and I learn that expression again, I think, oh wow, this is this, it's just a much easier way of doing that. It sounds more native and natural. I will use that. So I've got, gotten my new piece of equipment that helps me communicate, all right? Let me check the chat, making sure everybody is okay. All right, uh, let's see, nice to see everybody. George over there, Fabio. Ying, good morning. How's the weather in Japan? Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's nice. We're kind of getting to the end of the rainy season. It might maybe still rain some more, uh, but we'll see. Uh, as a gamer, I can relate with the analogy, best analogy to understand is this dram. Okay, glad to hear somebody understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, there, I mean, there are different ways you were doing this. Like, uh, I could try to think up like, I don't know, like what would be a good example for I don't know, like, I mean, really anybody. So wh whatever you do, usually people begin doing something like you start a new hobby or you start, uh, you're like training to do whatever. You're always beginning with something basic and over time you level up your individual skills in that thing. And this is what I'm trying to show with like the video game example because again, each one of these pieces is different. All right. When people talk about their overall fluency, it's like how good your overall character is. But you might have like a really good vocabulary, but maybe, you know, some grammar point you use is not very good. All right. So the the first thing I talked about is is having these like kind of slots, like a vocabulary slot. The next thing I want to mention very quickly is that you might increase your slots as you become uh, kind of deeper in the language as you as you get more nuanced, something like that. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick example. This was uh, from a commercial. You can actually watch this on YouTube uh, if I can remember the name of it. Uh, it was a like a toothpaste commercial. Uh, there were it was a, a bunch of children with a teacher in a classroom, and the teacher was saying, "What color is the sky?" And all the kids raised their hand. They said, blue, blue, the sky is blue. And then she said, what color is the grass? And the kids are all excited. It's green, the grass is green. And then she says, what color are my teeth? 
and the little kids, like you each, you hear all these different responses from the kids. They say like, off white, mother of pearl, stucco. <laughs> So it's making a joke about how like the, the answer the teacher is looking for is white. So my teeth are white, but like, you know, the commercial is about her having not like perfectly white teeth. So what's interesting here is like as a child, you learn the word white, but as you get older and you get more nuanced about like the different uh, like levels or the different shades of, of vocabulary, you start increasing your slots. So we don't just have white, like you could look at something that's white and maybe white actually has a couple of different color names for it. And that's the thing that you learn as you, uh, as you improve in the vocabulary. So when you're learning a new language, you usually learn in the same way. The teacher will show you something red. It's like, this is blue. But then maybe you learn light blue and dark blue. Or you learn about different shades of blue, like turquoise or uh, like sea green blue or like bluish, you know, bluish purple or something. So you start to learn all these different shades and each one of these things is like a new slot for your armor. So it becomes a much more uh, interesting thing. But the point is that you should be learning it as a native. So you're learning to connect, like you hear something, you're connecting a situation with the vocabulary rather than trying to take something in your native language and learn it uh, through that. All right. So if I'm teaching you like color names, I don't I don't really want to take take like your native language and teach you something because maybe your brain doesn't really know what color name I'm talking about. Like we can guess like, OK, I'm talking about blue in general, but maybe this is like a very specific blue color or even this one. Is this like what kind of red color is this? Is this like reddish orange or maybe blood red? And you can learn these different things as you, as you get deeper into the language. But that's really what it means to build a vocabulary. All right. So when we talk about building a vocabulary, again, pardon me with these bad markers. I will have some better ones next time. Uh, but the, again, uh, the, the idea when people think about like how many words do they need to know to speak fluently, you can see from this example that like you could have a character like let's say you you're just starting and then you I don't know you learn some like really interesting word that gives you like a really strong sword so this is like you know maybe you I don't know you learn something about cars or baking or whatever you're interested in and so you begin like wow this is like a really great uh, it's like a really great sword now the English idea is that it's maybe some phrase or something that's really impressive to natives but you can't, like the rest of your vocabulary is not very good, all right? So your overall fluency is not very good, but maybe you're fluent, you're fluent with this particular thing and that's okay, all right? So the goal is to become fluent in all of these individual pieces and then as you get them together, it levels up your whole vocabulary, all right? So this is what I mean about building a vocabulary. So just to recap, uh, before I go back and look at the chat here, the main idea uh, always is that you should be learning through English. You should be learning things in English and really trying to understand it from the situation. So if you watch somebody ordering food, what do they say when they're ordering food? So if I go to like uh, Starbucks or McDonald's or a restaurant or whatever, it doesn't matter where I am, I'm there and I could listen to 10 different people order food. And each one of them is going to say it in a little bit different way. Their pronunciation is going to be a little bit different, their vocabulary, their accent, all of that is going to be a little bit different. So as I'm building my vocabulary like a native, I have my vocabulary and I'm looking, what can I change? What can I level up or what can I maybe increase if I learn something a bit more nuanced, all right? So I could go to a restaurant and say, give me, the, give me like the chicken dish but maybe they have 10 different chicken dishes. It's the same thing like colors. Like, do you want black or do you want like dark black or midnight black or some other, maybe there could be like tons of these things. If you ever, uh, and this is especially interesting for men, uh, if you go to like a women's, uh, like the makeup area in a department store, it's usually on the first floor, so you walk in. If you're a man, just walk by and you will see like, it's like a hundred different red makeup, like lipstick uh, colors. <laughs> 
It's amazing. And each one of them has its own name. E even if they're like the eye can't even tell the difference between what those things are. But that's like really like adding a lot of slots to your vocabulary specifically for that thing. But it works the same way, all right? So either we're kind of like, we're building up our vocabulary as we start with something simple and then we go to something more advanced when we feel more comfortable with that. Uh, and then we still remember this other word down here, but we're, we're, we're learning something new and we feel more confident about using that. Or we're kind of expanding the vocabulary where we, we get more nuanced with something. So again, just like the, the lipstick example, there's, I don't, I don't know, like cherry red or, uh, I don't know, again, blood red or, uh, I don't know. I, I wish, I, I don't know much about uh, lipstick. <laughs> But if you go there, you will find like that, that kind of thing. You will see, you will really be surprised at how many different colors there are. Uh, and they all have different names and, they, you know, it's like part of the, the product. But it's the same kind of thing, you know, like, like my wife or whatever might look at some video game or whatever and be like, what's the difference between this sword and that other sword? And I'm like, well, this one does this amazing thing and that one does this and, you know, she doesn't care. <laughs> But you get the idea. The, the point is that you're, you're taking individual words and phrases, and as you learn new things, you're putting in kind of like making it, making it stronger by leveling up to that new thing. So you don't have to try to carry all of these things at the same time. You carry one sword at a time, all right? So maybe you just use like, yeah, that's red. And even if you know, like you could recognize like blood red and orange red and other things like that, uh, maybe you just use red and that's fine. You don't need to use like, you know, the most exact specific word because you might not even know that. And maybe native speakers don't know that either. So if I go to a makeup counter in America and I, I say like, oh, give me that red lipstick over there. The, the lady at the counter will look at me like, which one do you want? <laughs> what, what do you mean red lipstick? We've got 30 different red lipsticks over here. I say, okay, give me the, uh, the passion, passion red, whatever. You know, I'm just asking for, for something like that. But the point is like, I can just say, give me the red one or I point to it, something like that. So I don't know the vocabulary. They do, they have a, like a much deeper vocabulary. It's much more advanced. They have a much more nuanced look at that red lipstick. But maybe they don't know anything about, you know, whatever, baking bread or car engines or flowers or whatever, all right? But you understand the point, the, uh, the basic idea is that we take something, even something as simple as a color, and as we level up the vocabulary, we're learning things and we should be doing that all in English, all right? So you're, it's going to be much more difficult for you to do this if you're trying to learn it through through your native language. Because you, you begin with something like red, which is easier to understand, but if another person says, I don't know, like uh, magenta or fuchsia or aquamarine or something, these are all colors. Uh, but it's much easier to understand that when you see that color in English and you connect the color with the English word rather than trying to learn it through your native language. So it works the same way with vocabulary like this if you're looking at physical things or if we're learning about ideas uh, or if we're learning grammar or whatever, even pronunciation, it's the same kind of thing. So I will hear lots of different people express something. Um, like again, I gave a, an example in my previous video about the British English version of uh, inventory, inventory. But in American English, we would say inventory, inventory. So in a video game like this, you have an inventory. Usually you will like often carry all of these different weapons or something like that, but you're only using one of them at a time, all right? So don't overwhelm yourself by trying to remember everything and trying to like memorize it all perfectly. What you want to do is find something cool and then level up. Get to the next thing when you hear it and you think, ah, like I just learned some new thing for, for a, like a way of expressing this. It's a faster way to say it. It's an easier way to say it. It sounds cooler. It's more impressive to people. Whatever your, you know, whatever the idea is. All right. Hopefully this is making sense. Let me check chat and answer questions. But this is the basic idea of how you build a vocabulary. Is everybody getting this about like building it? All right. So we don't we don't carry everything at one time. We have a, like a slot for each of these different things. We have a slot for like the color red in our mind. 
All right, we have the slot for the color blue, and then we even have different slots for the other things like that. And your mind will open up infinitely to, to get all these different things. It probably doesn't need to. Maybe you don't need to know 30 different colors for red unless you work selling makeup or something. But, you know, like women would probably know more on average than men would for that. You know, that's just what they need to know about. All right. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, Marissa says, uh, hi there. I'm new from Yemen. Nice to see you there. And let's see. All right. I, we, all right. Nice. But why we can't chat sometimes, says Fabio. Are you talking to me? Talking to me, like, about, about like, chatting or whatever? Um, like, you, there's, there, there isn't much benefit in chatting with me that you couldn't get from, like, chat GPT or, like, asking a question of Google. Remember that you want to be getting all the input, all the understandable messages you can. That's how you learn as a first language. So me, I'm trying to spend as much time as possible getting examples that are the same kinds of things that natives would get. So I'm paying attention, like, what does my wife say to our kids? You know, what does she say? Like, she's like, hey, hurry up. Like, come on over here. I want you to do something. I'm listening very carefully to that. And then I know, oh, in this situation, this is what you say. So I'm learning it as a native. I'm learning it like a first language. So I'm learning Japanese as a first language. And that's why I teach English as a first language. I don't want you to learn it through your native language. I don't want you to try to study it through rules or try to memorize grammar textbooks, that kind of thing. I want you to, your, your mind will do that work for you automatically if you give it lots of automatic, like just the, the kinds of lessons, the, uh, the automatic training you get just from the understandable messages in real life. So just like the example I gave before about saying, I would always say like, what percent, what percent, what percent? But then I heard something cool, or it's like, ah, like what, what, like wadi, like non wadi, hey, non wadi, ne. It's like, oh, that's a cool way of, of saying that. But you learn the nuances for those things, like maybe it's good to say what percent at this time, and maybe it's good to say like non wadi at this other time over here. All right? And it just depends. Like you learn that by learning it as a first language. It's much more difficult to try to get somebody to explain that to you rather than just like seeing that, you know, in real life or getting, you know, from a story or watching a TV show or something that's all in English. All right. Uh, let's see. Hammerson Mayers. I used to build my vocabulary by translating to English the books that I'm reading. Yes. Uh, again, I don't recommend people do that. Translating uh, is going to be much more difficult and it's going to take you a lot longer. Really, your mind is desi it's designed to discover things in your environment because you're always looking for something new and you're trying to understand what's happening. And this is a natural process that's going on. So if you watch kids as they're learning, like they are trying to figure out because there is nothing to translate. You can't translate when you teach a child. They can only learn English or Japanese or French or Thai or whatever uh, in that language. So I can't, I can't use German to teach my kids English. I have to teach them English in English. So the only thing I can do is make the language understandable all in English. All right. So if you do the same thing, you will get the same result. <clears throat> New here from Canada. Nice to see you there. Slots. Yes. Uh, let's see, Adriano says, uh, from Brazil, and I see that. Greetings from Mexico, bro, and I see there, Alejandro. I remember the word inventory from the previous stream you gave as an example of how British and American, yeah. Uh, Drew, why did you move to Japan, says Adriano. Uh, I wanted to study Japanese design culture, specifically uh, learning gardening. So I wanted to learn traditional Japanese gardening, and that's why I came here. Uh, I actually don't do anything uh, with gardening currently, though. I would like to. I don't even have my own garden at the, at the moment. I would like to, though. I don't even have a plant. I don't have one plant. <laughs> I feel really bad. My, my previous apartment, I had lots of plants in it, but I would like to get more. Uh, let's see. San says, the best way to build vocabulary is to read books as much as you can. Yes, uh, reading is an excellent way to improve your vocabulary. And one, one of the things it's lacking, though, uh, is actually hearing the unclear and different, like, different speech that you get from people in real life. So if you're only reading books, it's really easy to read the word. The words are all written very clearly, but you're not getting a lot of the real native speech that you 
you need to have if you want to understand real natives in actual conversations. All right, so reading books is an excellent idea. I read books uh, in Japanese as well. It's the same thing, uh, but I also want to get lots of different that naturally varied review that comes from different ways. So it's coming from natives, uh, it's coming from maybe television shows or whatever. So make sure you get a nice mix of these different things. All right, Dr. Fatima says, amazing with a heart, nice. Uh, Fabio says, like ice cream, the same with shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Nils is back. Yes. Uh, so, so like, and th this is another perfect example of that about like the, the spacing out of slots. So a man, Typically, like me, I have like I have maybe two or three pairs of shoes. I've got some black dress shoes, some brown kind of nicer, you know, they could be dress shoes, they could be casual, and then I've got some sneakers just for walking around. But women, they will have like shoes for the beach on Tuesday in France. It's like that specific. Or they might have like, you know, shoes for this or that or whatever. Uh, and that, hey, that's, you know, people have their, their thing. Like men, you go into like a man's uh, garage or whatever, and they've got all these different tools. It's like, look at this tool. This tool does this thing. And here's like another tool that, that's like slightly smaller, but it basically looks the same, you know, but, but people need that. It's like, no, it's like a tool for this. We need to, you know, and, and people have their reasons for, for getting that specific stuff. But it works exactly the same in, in vocabulary and grammar and everything else. All right, Sam Walton, uh, what does make no mistake mean? Uh, this just means like don't confuse anything. So like, I, like let's say I look, I look very tired. I'm kind of sleepy over here. But make no mistake, I could jump up and, and like knock you out right now. Okay, make no mistake. So don't confuse this. Uh, you will hear this a lot in uh, like movies where people are trying to tell someone like, uh, like be careful, uh, don't, don't misunderstand something or don't, don't confuse something. Uh, or like you, you look at another team playing some sport and they, they look very small and very weak, but make no mistake. So don't confuse it, don't, don't misunderstand, don't, don't, uh, don't kind of like see things uh, the way they, they really aren't. Uh, so make no mistake, uh, they actually are very good at what they do. So like you see a, like a basketball team, it's all really short guys. And you come in and you're kind of laughing like, oh, look at those short basketball players. They can't do anything. And then, and then you lose the game because they're all like super fast and they can run around and even they can jump pretty well. All right. So make no mistake, they're short, but they're actually quite good. All right. So pay attention for when you hear these kind of things. Whenever I get questions from learners about like, what does this mean? You should take a word or phrase, put it into Google and get a bunch of examples. And then look at all of the examples and think like, what is the, what is the common theme here? What is, the, what is the idea? I promise you, if you learn it that way, this is the same way natives look up words. So a native hears a new word and they're like, okay, what does that mean? So I want to look up like some like different examples of that. And it's the different examples that all have like a kind of like thread between them. So what is the, the general meaning of the word as I look through those different things? It's much better to do that than getting a translation. A similar thing you can do uh, if it's like a physical thing, even if it's not a physical thing, it might still work is to do a Google image search. So if I go to Google and I want to know like, like even we just talked about colors before, like put in the color red and do an image search. And I guarantee you, you will find lots of different shades of red, all right? But if I want to know what something means, like, uh, I don't know, something like make no mistake, like I could probably find some images about that, but I'll definitely find some text examples as well. All right, uh, let's see the same with shoes. Indiana says, yes, it's true, I have many lipsticks. <laughs> Uh, all right, well done, let's see. Hammerson, uh, agree, but one of the problems I see about learning new words like this way is most of the new words in root in structures I don't understand. Uh, if you're talking about, so when, when you're learning something new, like uh, in the, the way I'm uh, recommending you do, now we obviously do this in Fluent for Life, so we help people understand uh, like lots of different vocabulary, but help you build your vocabulary in the same way. So you're learning something and you think, oh wow, this is like a really cool way of saying this. So often learners, they, they learn one way, they get the textbook. So learners often have like the most basic equipment. So they have like a textbook way of doing something. 
all right? Uh, like they might say, like, don't confuse something or like this is not how it really is. But then the native says, like, make no mistake, make no mistake. So I look old, but make no mistake, I'm still a good fighter. Make no mistake. So don't confuse this or like don't, don't do something stupid where you, you try to make a mistake and try to fight me like that. So make no mistake. Don't make any mistakes. And that's something where you learn that in the situation and then that's how you level up your vocabulary because you took that vocabulary and now it's part of you because you understand it like a native. All right? And it's the same thing like with colors or grammar or whatever. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for your classes. I want to buy Frederick. It's monthly payment or just one payment, says Yamaguchi Song. Uh, it's just one payment right now, so you can get the whole thing. Just click on the link in the description uh, under this video, and you can get Frederick. And yes, I think in the future, we'd like to add more things. We may have a monthly uh, subscription because I'd like to put stories in there um, and other things that you can learn with. But right now, because we're still just building the app, I'm always like trying to make it perfect. So we're still just releasing it uh, and testing new things with it. So get, it's just one-time payment. Click on the link in the description below to get that. Uh, Alejandro, again, when you begin to learn through English and not from your native language, sometimes you forget the meaning of that word in your native language. Yes, uh, that actually happens sometimes. I, would, I was talking with my dad. I couldn't remember the word ambassador. So I was, I was trying to, like, and I couldn't remember the word uh, ambassador in English. And I was just like, I was like, yeah, what's the name of that person? You know, they, they, they represent your country and they travel to a different country. And I, was, and I kind of remembered like, oh, ambassador, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you have these kind of slots uh, in your vocabulary. And this is one of the things I talk about in how to remember any English word, which is also in Fluent for Life. So if you understand this, this notion, like the way your mind works, it basically has all of these slots in it. And it's difficult to try to put something new in your mind because you already have these things, these slots in English. So if you create a new category of something, that's a much easier way of doing that. So I, I give a quick story about that, like trying to remember the word moss in Japanese. So when I was first learning that word, the word moss, uh, which is koke, I couldn't remember it. I was like, koke? I can't, why? I, it was, it's, a, it's like a short, simple word, but I couldn't remember it. Uh, and then I went to a, a gardening show in Japan and I saw a koke dama, which is like, it's, it's just a, like a kind of a dirt ball with moss around it. And sometimes it will have a flower or plant or something in it. And I was like, oh, look at that koke dama. And I understood, like, I created a new category of that thing because I didn't have that in English. Like, I didn't, there wasn't any, like, a, a moss ball thing was not a thing I knew about. But because I learned it in Japanese, I understood what it was. I then was able to understand both koke, which is moss, and tama, which is ball. And so I connected both of those things and was able to remember that uh, by using that same category idea, uh, the way your mind works. <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. All right. Uh, let's see. What is Frederick? Uh, so, so Frederick, uh, when you be, so Frederick, for anybody who would like to like learn more vocabulary, the native way as well. Uh, Frederick is an app that we created to have people learn English in English. And so rather than using translations, you're, you're learning with images and animations, uh, and that helps you understand the vocabulary and the grammar and the pronunciation all in English. So it's, it's a new kind of app, like the first app of its kind, uh, to teach you English all in English that way. So if you click on the link in the description below this video, you can learn more about Frederick. So if you want to improve your listening and your pronunciation, it will teach you the same way natives learn pronunciation. So learning all the individual sounds, and then you also hear how they blend together as you hear different words and sentences in the app. Uh, so we're still building the app. It's been a long time. I think we've been working on it for like 10 years or something. I've spent, oh man, I don't know how much, I, <laughs> I don't want to tell you how much money I've spent on this app that, that I could have spent on vacations and uh, cars and stuff <laughs> but it's a it's a labor of love a labor of love all right now if this is a new expression for you if my marker works come on marker come on a labor there we go kind of labor a labor of love 
So what's happening here, if this is a new expression for you, a labor of love. So labor, meaning to work. I'm doing some kind of work, but I'm not laboring for money. I'm laboring for love. So it's like something like a, a passion project, something that I really enjoy doing because I just really enjoy doing it. All right. So I really want to make a, an app, a whole system that everybody can learn with. So video learning is great. The only problem is that you can't really interact with video. So I really wanted to make software kind of like a, like a video game like this uh, that teaches you or lets you basically teach yourself the language. So Frederick is a labor of love. So it's something I wanted to do. Even if I never like made any money off of it, I still wanted to do it just because I thought that would be a good thing to make. Uh, so then that's a, uh, another great expression you can remember, like a labor of love. So when you're talking about some project you're working on uh, that maybe you don't do it for work, it's just a hobby, like you're fixing your car at home or you're, I don't know, you do gardening in your back, backyard or something, you can call that a labor of love, a labor of love. All right, so no link, no problem, Drew. <laughs> no, uh, no ink, no problem. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Uh, even I have to improvise. So maybe if like the markers aren't working, then I have to I have to be creative and, and think, you know, just like this. Like I'm not able to use the chat on my phone since I updated the YouTube app, which is really dumb. I don't know why that's happening. So I have to look at my computer over here, but you have to improvise. All right. Uh, Ohio Sensei. Let's see. Nice to see you there. Uh, Dr. Fatima, do you recommend to read any book about vocabulary such as a picture dictionary? Uh, yes, but uh, it's like if you want to do that, just use Frederick. Frederick is basically a picture dictionary, uh, but it's got animations in it as well, and it's got way more. It's over 2,000 words and sentences. Plus, you get to hear me speaking. So you get to hear all the pronunciation, and it's all organized by... Uh, by the vocabulary sound. So we begin with the alphabet and then go up to much more difficult things like graduation and synthesis and apocalypse, other words like that. But we do it step by step so you can tell exactly uh, where your English pronunciation is, is going well or not, not going so well. All right. So remember, books, books, again, are a great idea. The only problem is that you can't hear anything. I mean, maybe you listen to an audio book. That's a good idea, too. Uh, but the, you also want to hear native speakers. You really need to have that native speech, those native examples that are not clear, that are, that are not using clear textbook English. All right. This is why we put all that in Fluent for Life. All right. And uh, let's see, Hemerson again. Anki plus immersion on English are the best way to review new vocabulary. Uh, I don't really recommend Anki, uh, so those are just regular flashcards. Naturally varied review is going to be much faster than trying to just repeat something again and again. I think I may make a video about just like straight repetition and how it works, um, but your brain is, is always looking for new information. So it's making it much more difficult, like trying to re repeat something like a flashcard is really boring because your brain is not interested in doing that, all right? So what your brain is interested in doing is seeing something and trying to understand a pattern. Your brain loves doing that. That's why we like to solve puzzles uh, and like watch a murder mystery or something like that. Your brain is trying to solve a problem. It's entertaining for you that way. So if you have to choose between these two ways of learning, either you're going to repeat something again and again, which your mind does not want to do, or you're trying to make a puzzle and understand patterns, which your brain does want to do, which one should you pick? So the, the, the clear example or the clear winner here would be understanding phrases and patterns and things like that with naturally varied review. So rather than repeating something like looking at the same exact flashcard, you want to see that vocabulary in different contexts uh, or hear it from different speakers, hear it in different tenses. So see it in different tenses. Maybe you hear it or read it somewhere or listen to it somewhere. This is why we put Naturally Varied Review into Fluent for Life, because it's much faster than trying to take that vocabulary uh, and, and try to repeat it. 
and you'll notice like the, the, the naturally varied review is what natives are doing naturally. So this is what you do when you're learning your, your native language. Maybe some new vocabulary is created, like some person at a university discovers a new thing and they start telling people, you hear about it in the news, you hear about it from other people, you read about it in a newspaper. That's all those, all those different sources are, are what, what create the understanding and let you use that thing fluently for yourself. All right. So if you're just taking like one flashcard and trying to repeat something again and again, it's going to be less effective. Uh, it's also going to prepare you less for real conversations. So it's, it's better than doing nothing, uh, certainly. Like everybody should be reviewing, but it's just much more, uh, like it's a much easier and natural way to review if you get naturally varied review. All right, uh, for sure. I'm excited uh, by your approach, says Alexi. Glad to hear I'm Russian, currently living in the U.S. Yes, if you have any questions about it, let me know. This is my, my chance to, to really help people. Often what I do in these YouTube videos is explaining to people about like the, the strategy uh, and then you know the things we have like Frederick or Fluent for Life or, or the Native Fluency Blueprint. Uh, these are just different, like the actual lessons that will take you through that. So the system you can use to go through that. But I'm here now if you have any questions about programs or anything else. All right, uh, good evening, the ambassador, yes. Uh, let's see, uh, good night my brain now. Um, <laughs> Try. All right. Samuel Simpson says, very good. And uh, Sharaf says, hello, teacher. All right. Looks like we got to the end uh, of the questions over here, uh, uh, end of questions and comments. Does everybody understand this idea? Hopefully you're, you're understanding it better now than maybe you did before. When people talk about how many words do you need to speak fluently, I hope it's clear that you don't, it's not like you, you, like you can have this, this one piece of equipment, like one word or phrase, and you use that fluently. But maybe you're, you're very weak in other places, like you don't know other words. So if I hold up these colors, maybe you know this color, but you don't know the names of these. All right, so how fluent are you? You can't really say. What you can say is you're fluent in this color, but you're not yet fluent in these colors. Okay, so you have like some pieces of equipment and the point is to like level up the overall fluency by leveling up the individual pieces of equipment. So these um, like the different like words or phrases or grammar points or something, but it's okay to for you to use something that you feel comfortable with. All right. The goal is not to try to push yourself to some really high academic level, like to be a, a linguist and know everything perfectly. The point is to, number one, have something that you feel confident about. And again, the confidence comes from you understanding that thing very well. So getting lots of review of that thing, really understanding it like a native, rather than trying to like remember, okay, uh, for this grammar point, do we have it in like the past perfect? And then we put this word and then that word. You don't want to think about the vocabulary like that. You want to know it the same way a child does without having to translate anything. All right. And so the second thing is in making sure like we feel uh, confident about the vocabulary and, and we don't need to worry about like trying to remember everything. So you're building, you're building your vocabulary and then you're uh, kind of taking something you like and then that becomes your new thing that you're using currently. And you'll notice over the course of your life you use different vocabulary. And then you also have like the kind of nuanced vocabulary where you might say hello uh, in a more like professional business meeting but you might say hi or hey in a more casual meeting. And so that's again like the like the lipstick. It's the same thing like instead of the color red, we're talking about different greetings. So we might have a greeting for uh, being like polite or a greeting for being more casual. And you get these different slots for uh, the different kinds of greetings you make. Or we have a slot for like greeting someone at night. So we say, good evening. Or more casual ways, just like evening, evening, all right? All right, Alexi again says, I hope you have the whole algorithm of preparation, including the study plan, which has uh, a critical importance. The whole algorithm of preparation. What do you mean specifically, Alexi? Are you talking about Fluent for Life? Uh, if you are talking about Fluent for Life, I can explain quickly uh, for you and anyone else who would like to know how it works. Uh, basically, what we do, um, ah, and these damn markers. <laughs> 
I can't explain it with, I have to do this without markers for today. Uh, but the basic idea behind Fluent for Life is that most people struggle to speak because they don't really learn the language in English. They're trying to learn something through their native language and they're thinking about it logically. So they remember like, oh, like I use the past perfect in this sentence or, or like, you know, they're thinking about grammar rules or they're thinking about translations. But when they're in a conversation, you have to be quick. You have to maintain the flow of the conversation. And so the only way to do that is really to learn English as a first language. Now there are three pieces of this, uh, learning as a first language. So the first one is learning the actual vocabulary that native speakers would use. If you don't know what native speakers are saying, then you won't understand them and you won't communicate in that language either. And the second thing is again, understandable messages, where we're trying to understand what natives are saying all in English. And I want to connect my vocabulary, so the vocabulary in English, with the situation. So if I drop something on my head, that's the situation. I drop something on my head, what does a native English speaker say? They say, ouch, or ah, damn, or you know, whatever that the expression is. There are different things you can say. But most native speakers, they know the word ouch, and that's what a lot of people say. So you can learn more expressions and other things, but the point is like, you want to get so good, like ah, you drop something on yourself, or, like, or you get surprised or whatever, you can respond to that thing automatically. And the only way to do that is by understanding it like a native. That's the whole point. And so the last thing that helps you do that is the naturally varied review. So we want to hear lots of different examples about vocabulary, like uh, we want to hear not just me, like you don't want to hear only me teaching something, you want to hear other native speakers talking about that same thing. So you want to get lots of examples of like an Irish person or a person from the southern United States or like a man or a woman. We want to hear lots of different examples uh, and from, again, people all over the world. So what we do in Fluent for Life is we really want to help you uh, build mastery in the language so that you automatically communicate. So we want to help you learn like a native and learn systematically the same way a native does. So the way the program is broken down is well, we have an index that talks about all the different topics you could learn. It's got all the grammar points listed, all the, the different native speakers and where they're from. Uh, and then obviously what the topic is for that conversation. So one topic might be uh, learning about baseball and all the, the vocabulary that we use from baseball in other situations. Like we're talking about baseball, like let's say you, you go out on a date, you know, with a, with a girl and your friend says like, hey, did you hit a home run? You know, did you score? So you're asking like, you know, did you get a kiss or something like that? And we have a whole vocabulary that's just talking about that from baseball because it's such a popular uh, and important part of American culture. Uh, and so you're learning something like that. Uh, and then the key there is to focus on something. So you spend your time, you spend like a whole month just focusing on that vocabulary and reviewing it very well. So each day you're learning the vocabulary in a slightly different way. You're listening to it, you're writing it a little bit, maybe watching something or listening. And as you go through the lesson set, you automatically build fluency, even if you don't have someone to practice speaking with. So the point of kind of the way people are naturally learning the language uh, is that you don't spend your time trying to repeat things to other people. What you should spend your time doing is really understanding the language well, all right? Because when you understand the language well, that's when you feel confident about speaking. Most people in conversations, they worry about saying something because they don't know, well, is this the right word for the situation? Like, they don't know. Like, they, they learned maybe something from Spanish or Russian or whatever the, the language is, and then they don't know exactly, mm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so maybe I should pick a different word. And so if you're not feeling confident about that, then it doesn't matter if you can have conversations or not, because they will all keep you at this kind of lower level of, of using the vocabulary. So everyone who joins the program has their own unique plan through it. So there are a hundred different lesson sets and most people don't go through all of them and you don't need to spend that much time in it because the point is to get fluent in that particular vocabulary 
just like you're building up like a really strong sword. We do that really quickly. So you go through that, you learn that vocabulary, and then after you go through uh, that first lesson set, you are now fluent in that vocabulary, and you can use that when you're talking about other things. So even if you're learning about baseball and that vocabulary, now you know how to use that vocabulary in the right situation in business or when talking about war or talking about relationships or whatever. And then you go on to the next lesson set and do the same thing again with some different vocabulary and grammar and speakers. And as you go through the whole thing, it's basically simulating what it's like to learn English in a native environment. So if you can't travel or even if you live in the United States, if you want to have like a, like a very uh, systematic native environment that's really going to give you the review you need, that's what we have in Fluent for Life. Uh, but let me know if you have specific questions about it. Oh, I have was anyone else? Yes, I know this is a this is a, a special. <laughs> it's a national holiday, uh, but yes, I didn't know today was a national holiday. <laughs> so I got up. I thought I was uh, going to give my like walk my daughter to school. I will do that sometimes, uh, but it's a national holiday, and I was already like planning on doing this. <laughs> so here I am. But yes, if you are enjoying, hopefully, uh, enjoy your day. <laughs> enjoy the national holiday. Uh, let's see, Sam again, uh, fuchsia. Yes, fuchsia is the color. Uh, I mean the schedule, the study plan, in uh, sort by step manner. Yes, Alexi. Uh, so when you join the program, you get a daily schedule. Uh, and again, so you, you, you begin by picking from the index what lesson set you would like to learn. And it's all done by yourself, so you can go through it. Like we have a, a recommended schedule, but some people like to go through a little bit faster or a little bit slower. It just depends on how much time you have. Uh, but yes, there's a, a schedule every day. And so today we're going to spend at least 15 minutes or 30 minutes just watching a video or trying to write a little something. And again, like if you can spend more time, fantastic. But even if you only have 15 minutes or 30 minutes a day, and almost everyone should have that kind of time. Uh, but if you have that, yes, it's all structured for you. Uh, Nathan, Nathaniel says, let's see, hello, teacher. Watching you from West Center from Brazil. Hello from Brazil. We got lots of fans in Brazil. Sam Walton again. YouTube English teachers should watch your vids and take notes. You're on an, uh, another whole level. Yeah, I think actually a lot of YouTube teachers do watch my videos. <laughs> That's why you see people like, so I have a video on my channel uh, it's like, it's probably the most popular video on YouTube on English fluency. It's called Get Fluent with One Trick. And so you can go to like, if you type in Get Fluent with One Trick, you will see all the people that copied that. <laughs> and I've seen that in other languages too. It's like Get Fluent in French in one, with one trick or whatever. But most people don't, they don't actually do what I recommend. It's still the same kind of thing. Now this is a tricky thing about YouTube because as a like as a business, I'm not really I'm not really doing YouTube the right way. <laughs> I, it sounds kind of funny, but I, I, I have a, I'm I'm at war with myself. This is another good expression for you. So to be like you know what it means to be at war. So at war, like I'm at war. So you're fighting, but you're at war with yourself. At war with yourself. Let me write this clearly. Yourself. At war with yourself. All right, so I'm at war with myself about uh, like how I teach on YouTube. So if anybody out there is watching and you want to teach English or whatever the thing is on YouTube, uh, the, the kind of typical way to do it is to give people more new information, okay? Uh, so I mentioned earlier about, like, I forget who was asking about, like, Anki flashcards or whatever, but remember that your brain is naturally interested in new information, all right? It always is looking for something new. So you go to YouTube, most people do not go back and watch a YouTube video they already watched, all right? It's very rare. Uh, you might have like a, a favorite movie or something like that that you go back and watch occasionally, but it's very rare for people to go back and watch like a language lesson on YouTube again. All right. But so what what like what people typically do for teaching on YouTube is like here are 10 new words to remember about whatever. 
all right? So you watch that because you're naturally interested in that. Your brain is excited to watch new information, but then you forget it because you don't get any review. <laughs> So you're, you're like the, the YouTube kind of teaching or whatever is, is all about trying to get as many views as possible. Uh, and so that, that leads to people making content that like it doesn't really build fluency because you need to have review in order to build fluency. All right. So it keeps you kind of stuck watching, you know, the same kinds of things. So when like when people ask me, why should I join your program? When there's so much free content on YouTube, I say, well, it's great. If you enjoy watching content on YouTube and you're getting fluent from it, fantastic. But a lot of people are not. <laughs> so they're, they're kind of stuck on YouTube. They like learn a few words and then forget them and then learn, learn something else and then forget them instead of getting naturally varied review. So you, it's possible to get that. You basically have to create your own learning program to get naturally varied review from YouTube if you're trying to learn that way but it will not come from watching more random YouTube videos about like learning English vocabulary, all right? So just understand what's happening uh, about that. So yes, other people like, they might take like popular videos or whatever from certain channels or something. Um, and yeah, like I've, I've learned from other teachers as well. There's like, you know, some, some great things, but once I learned about like, like even Dr. Stephen Krashen, like I give him credit for, hey, he like came up with an idea about how people should be learning. And it, it's the same thing I discovered, but he has like a lot of the, you know, the scientific evidence or whatever that, that also proves it's correct. So I'm also learning from other people. But again, if you want to become fluent, you need review. It's the review that gets you fluent. And it's the, the review is boring for people. That's why people don't want to do it. All right. So that's why a naturally varied review becomes the solution to that. So you're able to, unlike a, a flashcard where you look at the same thing again and again, and it gets more boring each time you do it, you have to change it up. You have to mix it up with something else and make it a little bit different. And that makes it more uh, kind of palatable or interesting or acceptable to your mind. So your brain thinks, ooh, I'm listening to that. Now it's a different speaker saying that same thing or it's in a different context, or like before it was, you know, for business, now we're using that same thing for talking about relationships. So just remember this as you learn, I talk about this sometimes, but it's the, it's not more English that gets you fluent, it's the review. Remember that little kids, they know fewer words than a lot of adult native English speakers, but the kids speak more fluently. Why is that? It's because they review that vocabulary, they know that vocabulary really well rather than trying to have a big vocabulary that they don't remember. All right, uh, let's see. It is says, what does the phrase nail, ah, uh, Neil, Nils is back mean? I think you say it sometimes when, when you see a comment. Ah, uh, Nils, yes, Nils is back. Uh, so Nils, and this is an interesting thing how vocabulary works as well. So Nil, ah, <clears throat> I keep forgetting that this, let me see, maybe red is better now. Yeah, so Nils is a is like a, a German name, I believe, uh, and in the movie Die Hard with Bruce Willis, so the original Die Hard from, I don't know, that was like 30 years ago, I think. Uh, so in that movie, there is a character named Nils, and Nils is one of the terrorists that, that uh, comes in and gets in this, uh, it's a Japanese uh, office building in Los Angeles. If you've not seen the movie, you should watch it. It's an entertaining movie. Uh, but uh, Bruce Willis is on the, he's on the walkie-talkie talking with the, the head terrorist. Uh, and, he, and the head terrorist is like, Nils, where, like, where are you, Nils? And Bruce Willis is like, Nils is dead, asshole. <laughs> he said, Nils is dead. Uh, and so whenever, like, I've never met anyone personally named Nils, but I thought it was a cool name. Nils is dead. So now when I see Nils, look, look at that, Nils is in the chat. <laughs> Still over there. So Nils is in Wisconsin, I believe, still, not uh, Germany currently. But whenever, I, whenever I, I, I see him there, I say, Nils is back. So like he came back for another chat rather than Nils is dead, you know, because that, be, that would be mean and not true. Nils is clearly alive. So that's where that comes from. All right. We call this, uh, we call this an, inside, an inside joke. inside joke. So an inside joke means it's like inside a circle. So 
So only the people in this circle understand the joke. The people on the outside don't understand the joke. It's an inside joke. So if you're talking with your friends, it's like, it's like a code you can use when you're talking with people or it's just something that only you and your friends know or your family or something uh, rather than something that like everybody has access to. All right, uh, how to join your program. You can just click on the link in the description below this video so you can get uh, Frederick. You'll see a link for that and you'll see a link for uh, Fluent for Life. Uh, let's see, Christian Ross says, hey teacher, uh, I have uh, been practicing all day for eight hours. I need more, ha ha ha, I see. <laughs> practicing English, doing something else. All right, let's see. Uh, naturally varied review is really important. Yes. So that naturally varied review was like, that was the, the main thing I discovered about, about how to get fluent. So when I talk to people about Stephen Krashen and when they're saying, they're like, what is, what is understandable messages? Or um, uh, Krashen calls this comprehensible input. I call it understandable messages just because that's a little bit easier to understand. Um, but when people say like, well, how much of that do you need? And I just say you need as much uh, until you get the aha moment. That's where you can stop and like, ah, now I got it. I understand what something means. So a good teacher can help you get to that aha moment for words and phrases much faster. So notice like I'm explaining something like what is an inside joke? What is a labor of love? What does it mean to be at war with yourself? And as you learn these things, like you might begin with a textbook example of like, yeah, I, I can't, like, I don't know if I should marry this woman or not. I don't know if I should start a business about this or not. It's like an important decision. I'm trying to decide, you know, and I can explain it like that. Or I can just say, I'm at war with myself. Or if I'm working on something, yeah, I'm just, I really love fixing cars or I love, like, you know, teaching kids at the library, something like that. Uh, even though I don't get paid for it, it's a labor of love, a labor of love, an inside joke. So I'm not trying to give you a translation of the word where you would be like, hey, I, I kind of understand like an inside joke. But once you understand it like a native, so I'm teaching you as a first language, so I'm teaching you English as a first language, the same thing, I would explain these same things to my own kids. So they ask me lots of questions about what does this word mean or when can we use something, and they're understanding by connecting the situation with vocabulary. All right, they're not trying to do it between like two different languages, even though they could. So now my, my, my younger daughter is four years old uh, and they could like use English and Japanese and like, you know, I could like, I could kind of cheat and tell them one thing means something else in, in English or Japanese, but I don't want them to do that. I want them to actually understand what it means within the language itself. <clears throat> All right, uh, yeah, let's see. Yuhi says, uh, hi, Drew, first time for a live class. Could you explain how to use composed of, consist of, comprised of? Every time I want to use it, I need to Google an example. Uh, well, those all mean the same thing, basically. Like, like, this, um, like this marker is composed of the different pieces of it. So it's composed of plastic. So I could be talking about what materials it's made out of, or I could be talking about the different parts, like it's composed of ink uh, and plastic, and I guess maybe that's it, just ink and plastic, or maybe something else. Um, so it's you could talk about it's comprised of the same things, or it consists of the same things. It, you know, they're, they're all basically the same. And this is the, the example I gave at the beginning of this video, uh, talking about like if you're you're developing a good relationship with someone you could describe that as we have good rapport or we're building a relationship or we get along well together or we're getting to know each other there are lots of different ways to say this so you don't need to like you can pick one of those expressions like which one do you like the best like comprise consist or uh, what did you say compose so in the same example, you level up your vocabulary, just pick one. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to like use like composed of or whatever. But you will understand the rest of them. They mean basically the same thing, all right? But you will learn a more, a more kind of like nuanced view of them. Like maybe I use uh, comprise when I'm talking about like, 
I don't know. It actually, I, like, I, if you if you look them up, you would probably find in a dictionary they would be like uh, synonyms. So a synonym is a like uh, a meaning of related or exact uh, same meaning. Um, so if you if you look for those, you would see lots of examples. But the, it's the examples rather than getting even like a definition from a from a teacher or something that will that will help you see that. And again, this is the your brain is a naturally uh, it's like a pattern recognizing machine. And so it loves to find patterns. If you give me 10 sentences with a word, like if I teach you a new word, but I don't tell you what it means, but I give you 10 sentences and you hear that word again and again, you will naturally come to understand what that means. And the more interesting thing is you will like the process. So I know it like people just like ask a teacher, just tell me what this means. But I promise you, when you discover what something means for yourself, you're like, ah, I got it. Okay. So this is the this is what we do with naturally varied review. Uh, and again, in Frederick, what you'll notice, like uh, we designed Frederick rather than a regular flashcard, which has usually a picture on one side of the flashcard and then a word on the other, you actually have four different icons for each word. So as you scroll through the different icons, it's like, ah, now I, I'm, I'm starting to get it by understanding uh, all of these different things together. It's a whole system you use to understand vocabulary, not just one example. And this is another reason why flashcards are not as good as naturally varied review. <clears throat> all right, Nils is back again with a nice smiley face there. Uh, and Yamaguchi-san says, uh, thank you. I'm very excited about Frederick. Yes, give it a try. We have more people in uh, Japan uh, playing with it, enjoying the app. Also, leave us a review. Anybody who has tried Frederick. Anybody, is anybody else in the chat tried Frederick already? And if you have, if you enjoy it, like, uh, like the app, give us a review. Give us an awesome review. I'd love to get more people trying it. I'm also looking for schools. Uh, so we're now starting uh, because I want to start building the like the school version so we can get that in school. So if anyone out there is a teacher and you would like to use it in a classroom, let me know. Just send us a mail. All right. And oh, I think we got through. All right. We got some more here. Yeah, nice to see everybody got some uh, some good sentences over here. Well, the Penguin Channel. Good job. All right. Uh, and let's see... Ah, I don't know my name. Okay. All right. Yep, yep. So Nils is just, yeah, that's the name. Uh, let's see. Great movie, yes. But it is uh, the name of a ship. Yes, I'm sure N Nils is probably the name of many different things. You know, maybe someone even has a cat named Nils. You know, maybe. Uh, Dran, guess my age without saying my age, that diehard movie. <laughs> Yes, uh, I am. You can guess my age. I am. Well, I'll just tell you, I'm 42 uh, years old. But yeah, I remember when Die Hard came out. That was 88, I think, something like that. I wasn't. I wasn't that old when it came out. Uh, would you recommend any outputs? What does that mean, Huang? Outputs. You mean input? Like you, you're trying to get more information, like the information you get for for learning. Let me know. Uh, Janaka says, <clears throat> can you suggest the three main steps to become fluent in English. Well, I just I basically gave you the whole thing. There's, there's only one thing you need to do to get fluent. It's learn English like a native. So learning English as a, I mean, I call it learning English like a native, but a, a better way to say it is learning English as a first language. All right. And part of the reason I say that is because people think it's impossible to learn like a native. They think, well, I, how can I learn like a native? I need to get a translation of something. No, you don't. If you have a good teacher who can, who can make the language understandable, then you understand it all in English, and that's how you use it. So when people get stuck thinking and translating about the language, that's when they can't communicate. And this is why you have many people who can read and write, and they can take tests in English, but they really struggle in actual communication because there, there are too many things going on in their mind. They are overwhelmed. That's part of what we're talking about in this video. Um, so people get stuck translating, hesitating, uh, and they can't communicate. And so the, it, the reason for that is because they learned English as a second language, ESL. This is the way most people teach the language. You're learning English as a second language, and that's why like, you, you're trying to translate things. It, 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 it basically makes your, like, the processing of your, your brain crazy high when you're trying to speak. 
So you're having to think, you're trying to pay attention and listen to what the other person is saying, and you're wondering if you're using the right expression. You can't just relax and talk for a long time and, and have you know, a good, enjoyable conversation. It's just a real, a real tricky thing. So as I explained before, uh, what I call like the three pieces of this, so the, the only thing you have to do is understand English like a native. And you do that by learning English as a first language, not a second language, all right? So this means you learn the real vocabulary that natives are using, so the real slang, idioms, phrasal verbs, all of that stuff. But you don't just get translations of it. You have to understand it all in English. So you need to get understandable messages, and then you need to have naturally varied review because you need to review the information in order to remember it and really develop fluency. The naturally varied review also helps you understand that better because after you get lots of examples of something, that's where you feel much more confident about it. If you get one example of something, you feel okay. Just like in the Frederick app, uh, if we just gave you one picture of something, you might understand it. And it's easy for something like a cat or a dog or whatever, you can see what it is, you understand that. But something, if we're trying to explain the word justice or like capture, with one image, that would be really difficult. But if we show you four different images, it's a lot easier to understand because you're looking at all of them. It's the naturally varied review, the varied review. We don't want you to just repeat, like show you the same thing again and again, because that doesn't teach you anything. You're not learning anything new by reviewing the same thing again and again. You have to change it a little bit. And so if you have all three of these things, these are the three pieces you need. And you'll notice, like there isn't a fourth piece about speaking practice because the speaking is a natural result that comes from doing these things. What most people are doing is they're trying to begin with like learning something through their native language and then they try to repeat that to other people. But because they don't really feel confident about it, they get stuck. So they're stuck in this like for years of, of not being able to speak. Instead, just learn like this. You level up your vocabulary by understanding English as a first language. That's the fastest way to get fluent, and it's really the only way you're going to get fluent without like a lot of work, you know, trying to do things, uh, spending a long time doing things a traditional way. So that's it. That's that's the whole process, and, and like almost every video, I talk about like this basic same idea. I'm just teaching different things, like giving you examples of different vocabulary or explaining how things work. But what we do in Fluent for Life is this: is that process of learning English as a first language. All right, uh, let's see, pretty nice, says uh, Shakib. Power, uh, I have uh, learned 2,000 words before, but I couldn't use any of those words, and now I am learning naturally varied review, and now I don't need to think about the words. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> and th and this, what, this is what happens to lots of learners, like it's easier to learn this way. Remember, you, all, all I'm doing is taking the same process that you use in your native language and, and just helping you do that in English. Because when you learn new things in your native language, you just do that naturally all the time. A friend of yours will tell you some new word, and you're like, oh, what does that mean? And maybe you talk about it. Maybe you hear about it on the news, or you hear about it from whatever. Like the government is trying to tell you to do something, and you know you hear it on a commercial and, and see it you know, around the city or whatever. They're trying to do it. It's the same thing with advertising. Like you see something again and again, and slowly it gets into your mind. But if you have the naturally varied review, it's going to make that process much faster. All right? That's why the, the naturally varied review part, that is like the real innovation I had uh, that really gets people fluent much faster. So it's not just about like, if you only learn like on YouTube, you will find lots of uh, conversational English. It's all over YouTube. And that's because like the mind is always interested in getting something new. So people want, give me new vocabulary, I want new vocabulary, but you don't know your current vocabulary fluently. Why are you learning new words? So I make videos about these kinds of problems, all right? It's like, it's not a very, I don't know, entertaining thing. There are people who are interested in that. So the people I help are the ones who really need to speak. So they need to, you know, it's like have uh, good conversations with, with people in their life, like maybe they have grandkids who speak English and they don't know their native language. Uh, or maybe they have to like, you know, be at a call center or they're running a company and they need to communicate with other people who speak English. Like it's for people who want to, want to speak fluently. Uh, let's see. Uh, Arturo says, hi teacher, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, uh, thanks. 
uh, the marker consists of ink. Is that correct? Well, like you would talk, like to talk about something like consisting of it, it's the different, the different parts of it. So like to give you an ex explanation, I'll answer this other question here. So what exactly, or what does naturally varied review mean? So naturally varied review consists of getting lots of different examples and varied examples of a particular thing. So one example, like I've done, uh, I, I made a video a few months ago about how to make espresso. And I did that, it was an, it's one example of naturally varied review. So in that video, if you go to our YouTube channel after this video is finished, you can watch that one, and you will see different people making espresso. Now there are some things, like people will be talking about espresso. <clears throat> Let's see here. Which marker, which marker will work this time? We'll see. Uh, so I'm going to use this other circle up here because it's already there and I don't need to draw a new one. Oh, very smart, huh? So let's say the first video you watch, it teaches you a bunch of vocabulary. So this is a video, one video about how to make espresso. But you don't stop there. You watch another video that's also about making espresso. So they're, they're both about making, an, uh, making espresso. And you will see here, ooh, there is some vocabulary that both of those people used. And maybe some vocabulary that's different. It doesn't matter. But you see, wow, these words must be more important. But let me try another video. We watch yet another video. And look at that, now we get, ooh, it's these, it's these words up here that we know those words are really important because they keep coming again and again, all right? And then in that video, I actually put four different videos of people making espresso. So here's like a fourth video is like that. So we know, ooh, this vocabulary is going to be very, very important. So when we're leveling up our, our sword or whatever, we're hearing different examples of the same vocabulary. Before I made that video, I didn't know anything about making espresso. I don't know what espresso is. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, some kind of coffee or whatever. I had no idea. I, I'm not really a fan of coffee. Um, but I thought it would be an interesting video to make because I don't know anything about espresso. So I can show you how quickly you can learn about something when you get naturally varied review. So in this example, like one of the first things uh, you learn is like you take uh, like the little espresso filter thing, you put some coffee grounds in it, and then you press it down. But they call it tamping. So to tamp, kind of like tamp it down or whatever, make sure it fits in the, in the little uh, filter thing. So this is one example of naturally varied review, where we take the same topic and have different people talking about that. So it's going to give you lots of different examples <clears throat> and this is something you can do right on YouTube. So instead of watching a bunch of random videos uh, like teaching English about that don't have any connection to each other, it's much better to take a topic and then focus on that, like how to grow roses. So you look up on YouTube for videos of native speakers talking about how to grow roses, and then you watch 10 different videos about that. And I promise you, after you go through all of those, you're going to feel very confident about some of the core vocabulary, and you will know, you know some other vocabulary as well, but that's how you feel confident, and you could start having a conversation with someone about growing roses after you do that, all right? So what most people do is like, they will, they will watch one YouTube lesson. Again, I apologize for these bad markers over here. So they watch one YouTube lesson about something, and then they don't really feel very confident about the vocabulary because they don't really understand it. They've only heard it from a clear teacher. So if like you could learn something from a teacher and then go into the real world and hear the same word but not actually hear it very well because someone is not pronouncing it clearly or you know maybe their pronunciation is like they're kind of mumbling a little bit. So the naturally varied review gives you all of these different examples of it. It's the varied review that gets you fluent, okay? It's not just hearing something one time because you will, you will probably not remember it. And also you won't really understand that thing very well. Remember that as you were growing up, you heard your parents, your friends, your teachers, other people in your community saying the same things. Your mom said, wash your hands, and your dad said, wash your hands, and your brother said, wash your hands, and, and your teacher said, hey, did you wash your hands? 
yesterday I washed my hands. So I'm getting different examples from different people in different tenses, and that's where I feel really confident about something. And I did it all in that native language. I didn't do it through another language, I did it all in English, all right? So all I've done is taken that process and put it into a system that you can use to teach yourself. And then, as you get fluent in that, you can start using the vocabulary automatically. That's how it works, all right? So hopefully that answers both of, that, uh, both of those <coughs> questions. So naturally varied, uh, naturally varied review consists of, uh, naturally varied review consists of, or what, if you think about what comprises naturally varied review, or it's composed of these different uh, uses of that same thing, or like we have a core idea or a core topic, and we're gonna have uh, different people talking about it, you're going to hear about it in different tenses, uh, and that's what naturally varied review is. So if you want to talk about, like, we want to talk about all the elements of something, this marker is composed of ink and plastic. This lesson that I'm giving you right now is composed of, you know, talking about video games, talking about vocabulary, talking about how we build fluency. So it's composed of. What are, like, the things I'm talking about? It's the pieces of something it's composed of. So I can talk about, like, a cookie. So this uh, chocolate chip cookie is composed of... You know, I could talk about the ingredients. It's composed of butter and milk and sugar and flour and something else, chocolate chips. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, uh, Daniel Ma says, Hi, Drew, I can, uh, I can fully understand you, but I cannot understand the movie. How can I improve it? So this is another thing that Naturally Varied Review helps you do. So if I, if I prepare you for a movie by explaining what the vocabulary is and giving you examples of how like those native speakers will be speaking, you will feel a lot more confident and you will understand that movie much better. All right, so most people, most English learners, They watch a lesson from a teacher, and then they try to go directly to understanding a movie or something like that. But the vocabulary is, is maybe the same, but a lot of it is different. It's going to be a faster speed. It's going to be maybe not as clear. So of course it will be more difficult for most people. And that's why you need to go in steps to prepare yourself for this vocabulary. So if we, if we begin, let's say like, uh, so what we do in Fluent for Life is we actually begin with a real conversation between two people, uh, or two or three people, actually. So some conversations, actually, it's more than, more than two people. And then we take this and we split up the information into different lessons. And so the first one, like, we're going to give you like one piece of grammar that you'll see here. Like just this month, we only really want you to master one use of grammar. So you can learn other things later, but right now just focus on this one thing. And as you go through the month, you will get fluent in that grammar. You, you will learn to feel very confident using it. So a lot of what's in uh, the program will be things that people already know, but they just don't feel confident using that grammar or that vocabulary or whatever. So we take the thing, like uh, you could do the same process with a movie. So you have like all of the vocabulary from the movie, uh, and like here's how to understand the different native speakers and you just go through that in different steps and so instead of trying to go directly to the movie which is more difficult you have a series of it's you know it's kind of like a staircase that goes up so you start here and you go up here and now you can understand the movie that's how it works so you have to prepare yourself for that because the vocabulary and the pronunciation and the speed is so different all right it's like trying to go from a beginner uh, to an advanced level in one jump <clears throat> uh, that's how you learn Japanese? Yes, that's correct. So I taught myself basically Japanese. I only had, I don't know, maybe like, like one month of Japanese lessons in a classroom, and I hated them <laughs> because it was so boring, and, and I, I wasn't learning anything. I was just like, I don't understand what, like, what this is talking about. It's, it's the same thing. Like a teacher will just give you more examples of, okay, let's uh, diagram this sentence. I don't want you to diagram a sentence. I want to understand what you're talking about. And, and that's like the coolest thing you can do for a learner is, is to let them understand something where they feel like, ah, I got it. Like, yes, now I understand uh, how something works. And when you do that, then you feel confident using it. Until that point, you will always be worried about something like, maybe I don't know, can I use this word in, the, in this 
context or something. I forget an example. I was talking about my, I was talking with my wife yesterday about what was what were we talking about? I forget. Um, I don't remember. But it, it was a similar kind of uh, thing like this where we were. I should have written that down. Maybe I will recall it later. But the basic idea is that if you're learning the actual vocabulary that natives are using and you're understanding it like a native, um, it's a lot easier to get that, that aha moment. Like, ah, like now, now I get what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm from India, Ravendra's Life. Nice to see you there. Uh, Shakib again, teacher. I understand some teachers, whatever they describe clearly, but did not know... With some teachers, even I have that vocabulary, whatever they describe, are they speak uh, fast or slow, or, let's see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yes, again, like, you, you have to be prepared for the vocabulary. It's the preparation that gets you ready for the conversation. So natives, natives like, they, they also don't feel confident talking about things until they really know that. So even if you look at little kids, there's a lot, they're just spending their time listening to people. They see mom, you know, like mom yells at dad or something and the kid learns, ah, that's what you say when you get mad, you know, <laughs> something like that. Or, you know, what do you sing when you're happy or whatever. It's all these things that you learn by paying attention to that. And then you speak. Speaking is the result of understanding. If you don't understand what you're learning, you don't feel confident, so you don't want to speak. And that's why lots of people avoid conversations. Or if they're in a conversation, they speak very, uh, like, you know, we got the very, like, the weak wooden sword and shield, and we don't, we don't feel very confident about our vocabulary. So we don't use it. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, says Suzette. Nice to see you there. Nils again. The most people speak uh, very fast and not clear, and then my brain is exploding. Yes, I like it uh, that you speak clear. I don't understand all, but I know what you mean most of the time. Yes, and so that, that's, that's part of the reason we, wanted, we want to take it slow and make sure you understand everything. These YouTube videos are a bit trickier because I have a wider range of people who are uh, like some people don't understand me very well. Other people do understand me very well. You know, it just, it depends on that. So I'm, I'm trying to be clear so more people can understand me and, and get this information. And then you can also uh, go back and watch these videos with the, the subtitles after I put the subtitles on them. Uh, Nandani says, you are a wonderful teacher. Thank you. Oh, well, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Wong says, yes, it seems like naturally varied review is a way of input to remember vocabulary. How about any other strategic outputs recommendation? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by strategic output. I mean, other than like writing, which is a form of naturally varied review also, like you're taking something that you learn, you hear it, you see it, you write it, you speak it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's like the kind of output you would do. Uh, but the, you, don't, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on yourself to speak. You just put, like, put all your energy into learning and understanding the language. And if you don't understand something, get more review of that thing. It's like, the, like maybe the lesson is not very clear or you just need more examples of it or something. And some things are just a little bit tricky. Like for me, like... Like a thing that was tricky, and it's even still tricky sometimes, is like is like the ba hodo, uh, like formation, like ike ba iku hodo e, you know, something like that. Um, where like the more you do something, the more something else happens, like that. And this can be a tricky thing if the like the grammar structure is a little bit different in your native language. And in those cases, it's really important to get lots of review in that language. So for me, I don't really want to like study it like a grammar structure. I just want to get lots of examples. And then I and then I understand like, ah, okay, now I understand. I'm hearing it more and, and I'm feeling more comfortable with it. So there isn't a lot you have to do with like output. Um, the output is a natural result other than writing for practice, which you can do. <clears throat> H. Ray, the name Nils reminds me of an old anime named uh, Nidusu no Shigitabi. Huh? That's interesting. Yeah, maybe that is that about a foreigner, if it's if it's a name like Nils like that, ah, based on a Swedish juvenile novel. Ah, okay. Uh, learn English. Let's see. I cannot remember the words that I learned. Yes. <laughs> it's again like people people want to learn, 
uh, like and this you will see YouTube videos that will actually teach you like hundreds of words like it's crazy I've seen uh, idiom like idiom videos or just regular vocabulary where they will teach you it's like learn learn 100 words so here's like one two three four five six seven <clears throat> You know, we have all these, all these vocabulary words, but you don't, you don't understand them deeply. So the, the actual vocabulary that you learn well, like, it's got roots in it, like a tree with some roots. So you understand that vocabulary well. It's better to spend, like, a day and just learn a few words and understand them really well, and then the next day you learn a few more and understand them really well. Okay, so in, in Fluent for Life, we try to give people like the core vocabulary for that lesson is like, I don't know, how many words a day, like 10 words a day or something? It's not, it's not that much. I mean, it's, it's spaced out in different ways and a lot of it is vocabulary that you know already. It's just that we want to help you understand it really well so you feel confident and use it fluently. All right, but again, remember the point is not to just learn a bunch of words. You want to understand the vocabulary really well so you can use it fluently. <clears throat> Let's see, Suzette says, the more, uh, I need more vocabulary because when someone talking, I don't understand everything, but I understand everything you say. Yes, your, your problem is not more vocabulary. It's not more vocabulary. <laughs> I promise you. Like, you, you're, you, you have like an issue about like the understanding Maybe if they're using some different words that I don't use, like in that case, yeah, there's a vocabulary issue. But for you communicating fluently, uh, you don't. It's much better to actually level up your current vocabulary than than to try to learn new words. So you can be prepared, you know, for idioms and stuff like that. This is the kind of thing we teach in Fluent for Life. But it's much more important for you to understand the current vocabulary you have rather than try to learn more words. Uh, Dran says, I appreciate you reading each comment, questions in the comments section, and taking uh, time to explain it thoroughly. Great teacher. Yes, well, this is my, my chance to help people. This is, this is what I, what I want to do. Uh, I did not have this when I was first learning Japanese. There wasn't, there wasn't even YouTube or anything at that point. <clears throat> um, let's see, George says, in-app purchase level gone after reinstall the app. Ah, uh, send us an email, George, if you have a question about that, but you should be able to go to the level select screen and then click on uh, like update or restore previous purchase. There should be a, a little button that does that. I don't know if you're on uh, iOS or Android, but you should be able to uh, reinstall and still get the app after that if you're using the same, but you have to be using the same account. So if you have an Apple account or a Google account and you use a different one, then it would not, it would not share that information. Uh, yes, I saw the video with Espresso. Yeah, got it. All right, Daniel Ma, uh, thanks. Do you have a program train the people to understand the movie? Yes, so that's what, that's what Fluent for Life is. It's not, it's, it's not about like, like only movies, it's about understanding conversations, but that's, if you, if you can understand everything in Master English Conversation, like uh, and all, all, all the lesson sets in the program, you will, you will understand movies just fine. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Eunice says, hello teacher, Frederick. Uh, the aha moment, now I got it, yeah. Zaid says, I've been trying to use more vocabulary, but I feel like I'm stuck using the same word over and over. Yes, again, it's okay to use the same word uh, until you find something better or you find a better way to e express that. But the way to stretch yourself so that you start using more difficult vocabulary is to understand more like a native. So watch what natives are saying for that situation. So if you always say hello, every time you greet someone, you just say hello, hello, hello. Then look at native speakers and wonder what they're like, what is that person saying? Someone said, hi. Someone said, hey, good afternoon, good day, nice to see you. How you been? How's it going? So as you see that, you're connecting, ah, in this situation, this is something I can say. Find something new and then say that. There you go. That's what this video today is about. Uh, uh, Sunita says, uh, Cynthia, ne? come in, ne? sorry about that. You are the best teacher. Glad to hear it. Uh, I use your approach and it really helps me. Glad to hear it. Uh, 
let's see, Sam Walton again, risk comes not from knowing what you're doing, it's what we don't feel confident speaking. We don't understand the vocabulary well. Yes, Sam Walton has it, very good. All right, and uh, let's see. Whoop, chat was disconnected. I think we're still working though. I don't see anything wrong with the video, but we're doing all right. I'm gonna shut it down now to make sure I don't lose my voice again. Uh, Nathaniel says, uh, good night, teacher. Good night, all. God bless you. Thank you. You know, says, I think learning some few word from the same context and try to get their different aspects and parts of speech uses and collocations, synonyms, and even related in, uh, idioms, and finally practice them. Yes. So that's, you're explaining naturally varied review. Bruno Dart says, uh, what's up, y'all? How's it going, Drew? Glad to be here learning from you once again. Yeah, so look, if you even look at this chat, you will see different greetings from people in the chat, and different greetings. And so it's not like one person is correct and another person is not, it's just different, different greetings. So you don't have to put lots of pressure on yourself to think of one correct thing. But if you learn this way, then you're basically building up like an inventory of a lot of vocabulary, but you pick the specific words that you like, that you use frequently. All right, so I do the same thing when I'm speaking Japanese, like I will use something and then use it frequently, and then maybe I hear something better, and then like, oh, that's a cooler thing, I'm gonna use that expression instead, all right? It's like kids, like my, my younger daughter, uh, or both of them, it's like, oh, I gotta go pee pee. Like my, you know, my four-year-old, she has to go to the toilet. It's like, I gotta go pee pee. Now, do you think when she's, you know, 32 years old in, in some business or whatever, she's going to tell people I have to go pee-pee? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, maybe she will. I don't know. But probably not. She will graduate to some more interesting vocabulary. Oh, I've got to go to the toilet. I've got to go powder my nose. Or I just like, excuse me for a moment, you know. Lots of different ways to express that. All right. Uh, all right. I think that's the end of the chat. Make sure the chat is, oh, I'm not, I'm not signed in right now, but it looks like we're still working. Uh, <clears throat> All right, Andran says, how about uh, let's create a group chat for students of Drew. What do you think, fellow students? Yes, I will leave you all to create whatever you like. Uh, I will not be responsible for that. I also often don't really recommend uh, chat groups for people because, like, there are already chat groups for native English speakers, and you should just get in those if you want to have people to chat with. So it's useful, I suppose, uh, if you want to meet with other people, if you'd like to, fantastic. Um, and also in our programs, we have uh, like a community where people can talk with each other and ask us questions. But you really should be trying to get as much uh, input as possible uh, from other natives. And so get in chats or groups or whatever. Think about the people or the things you're interested in and, and do that online or do it in real life. That's how you get along. All right, uh, let's see, Rahil says, uh, good morning, teacher, prayers for your long life. Thank you very much, hope so. Uh, Angel is back with the cat again. Tran says, thanks, Drew, I appreciate the lesson for today. It's my pleasure, and, and Abdi says, thanks as well. All right, I think that's a good spot to end on. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, please do click that like button because we need to tell YouTube we need more content like this. Also, share the video if you know other people who would enjoy it as well. So especially people who have been struggling for a long time, they can understand pretty well, but they're not really good speakers and they want to know why. They want to know why they have been learning English for a long time and still can't speak. And again, uh, if you want to learn this way, you can just level up your vocabulary nice and easy just by learning English as a first language. If you'd like to do this, just click on the links in the description below. Nice, simple thing you can start doing immediately. Just get Frederick, start playing with that, and it will actually teach you uh, much of the vocabulary and grammar and pronunciation you need to learn just by you like playing a game. Uh, and then we've got obviously uh, Fluent for Life, which will really help you become a much more confident fluent speaker automatically, even if you have no one to practice with. All right. Well, thanks again for everyone joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.